What's going on guys? Kid Blue here representing Giants Nation. You're watching the Fan and Fan Network. What is going on guys? What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back into another New York Giants video and today we are continuing our 2020 NFL positional preview series for the New York Giants. Today we're going to be talking about the tight end position but before I get into that guys if you guys are enjoying the positional preview so far make sure you guys hit that like button smash that like button subscribe if you guys are new and remember to share this video for any other Giants fans out there that may not be aware of the positional previews yet this is going to give you everything you need to know about each and every position for the New York Giants in the year of 2020 and another quick plug here for you guys the merch is live we got a kid blue sport uh kid blue sports talk mug here if you guys want a mug just like this it's nice and it's beautiful man it's really clean from teespring.com if you guys are interested in something like this or maybe a t-shirt or maybe a sweatshirt or maybe a phone case we've got all of that on the merch link in the description below make sure you guys do that and join the fan to fan network as well on twitch.com content will be on the way so let's talk about the tight ends for the New York Giants. And this is a complicated subject to talk about because we really don't know what we're going to get from any of these players, including Evan Ingram. And I say that because of his availability in the past couple of years. He had a spectacular rookie season in which everybody was thinking that he was going to be a top five tight end in the years to come for uh, in the NFL. Uh, but, you know, Evan Ingram coming out of Ole Miss in 2017, drafted with the 23rd overall pick I mean he really underwhelmed the next few years because of injury not only that he had an issue with hanging on to the ball the balls would hit his hands and he would just drop them he had about 722 yards in his rookie season but ever since then he's had 500 yard seasons and 400 yard season last year last year he was actually off to a tremendous start in which his first three weeks of the NFL season uh, going against the Buffalo Bills the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were all phenomenal and it seemed like he was actually becoming what his potential was telling for all of these years and again he was getting hurt and inconsistent and it seems to be a common theme for Evan Ingram but in my honest opinion I think this system that Jason Garrett has implemented will work for Evan Ingram now that's gonna cause a lot of bootlegs a lot of uh, rollouts causing the tight end to be open many of times but we are still looking for Evan Ingram to be that red zone guy he hasn't yet established himself as that yet but I think he can do that I mean he's only standing at 6'3 that's not the tallest tight end in the world but it's yet not the shortest uh, I mean he's right there at an average height a little undersized as far as the tight end goes height wise he's a little undersized as far as you know um you know weight wise as well but that really adds to his athleticism I really like what Evan Ingram brings to the table as a tight end I just hope he reaches his potential uh, I think like I said I think the system really works for uh, Evan Ingram and I'm excited to see what what's in store for him in 2020 next up we move on to Caden Smith and this has been a fan favorite for quite some time now um, you know he finished the year with 31 receptions 268 yards and three touchdowns I mean nobody really expected this we we signed him late in the season. He was released by the San Francisco 49ers in which they drafted him last year with a, I believe, sixth round pick. So, I mean, he was drafted and he made the team for the 49ers, but it was let go and joined the New York Giants. And uh, I mean, I think he was he was great. I, I He was great in spelling, um, you know, uh, Evan Ingram. I don't know if you can really use spelling for, for, for uh, tight ends, but in relief of Evan Ingram, you know, when Evan Ingram was either getting inconsistent, inconsistent or if, if he was hurt, Caden Smith really stepped into the role, really did uh, a great job filling in, and nobody really thought that he would do what he did last year. Um, no, I really think that da Daniel Jones and Caden Smith really have a chemistry going, really built that type of tight end and quarterback connection. Hopefully that can be that in the next coming years. Who knows if Evan Ingram doesn't work out, um, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with uh, Caden Smith. I don't think he's the most athletic tight end in the world. I don't think he's the worst either. Uh, it really reminds me of like a Rhett Ellison almost, right? So, um, uh, you know, a tight end we have for the past couple of years. So that being said, I mean, I like Caden uh, Smith. I'm excited to see well, what we see from next year. 
Levine Toilolo, who we signed from the 49ers, uh, is a blocking tight end. Not really a receiving threat whatsoever, but he's standing at 6'8", 268 pounds. Like, that is a basketball player right there. And a lot of these tight ends really are from, uh, you know, basketball sort of roots. So, uh, Levine Toilolo is a huge target. Unfortunately, he's not used as a receiving threat at all so you won't really see him in the red zone uh his career stats only have eight touchdowns in his eighth year uh you know that's about that's about one touchdown per year so uh i mean not very not very productive as far as the receiving game goes which i think would be useful for his height but he is mostly a blocking tight end and he's pretty much who we signed because red ellison retired and he was our blocking guy and Levine Torlolo is really going to step in and try to be our blocking guy and he's for the most part done that in the NFL you know he's had his time with the Atlanta Falcons in which he spent the majority of his career with and then he went on to uh, be a Detroit Lion and then most recently he was with the 49ers really like in all those roles all those teams he were he was on he was primarily used as a blocking tight end so uh, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see what we get from him a lot of guys that we bring on to the Giants no matter what regime it is we really wind up uh, we really wind up using guys in different um, different ways in which they were meant I uh, like you look at Dexter Lawrence I mean nobody really thought he would be uh, more of a pass rushing defensive tackle uh, we thought he was strictly a run, uh, run stuffing guy but you never know what you get from a player uh, before they they put your uniform on so uh, that being said Levin Lolo, it's interesting to see what we'll do with him but he's mostly going to be a blocking tight end we then move on to a familiar face, and that is Eric Tomlinson. Uh, if you guys remember Eric Tomlinson, we signed him last year, and he played uh, a couple preseason games for us, uh, I believe, and I don't believe he made the team, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but, you know, we let him go, and then he signed with the Patriots, and then the Patriots let him go, and then he signed back on with us. Uh, he also joined the Raiders as well. So, three teams in one year only recorded one reception, for one yard. Uh, Eric Thomason is another blocking tight end. He's not really used in the receiving game, as you guys can see from his career stats. 17 receptions, 194 yards, and one touchdown. I believe he's been in the league a couple of years now, I think since 2015, correct me if I'm wrong. So he's, he hasn't really been getting a shot in the NFL. He's another guy that's pretty much primarily used to block uh, that's also what he was used uh, with the New York Jets as well so we have a lot of these blocking tight ends something that we are really depleted of in the past couple of years the Giants really want to make the effort to get more guys in there like that uh, to help out Saquon Barkley help out this offensive line and it really tells to what Jason Garrett really wants to do with this offense it's very reminiscent of what we've seen there in Dallas now we move on to Garrett Dickerson, and he's a guy that really really reminds me of like Will Ty and Matt Lacoste, not their play style, but kind of their existence on this Giants roster. I mean, especially that they're also coming from the tight end position. Matt Lacoste, Will Ty, a lot of you guys know these guys uh, in the, like a couple years ago, but you know, these guys were all guys that could have made the team have the talent to make the team but just never make the cut and eventually do get their chance either with this team later on or with another team Matt Lacoste went on to be a Bronco and Patriot and Will Ty wanted to be I believe also a Patriot as well so um Garrett Dickerson is a ath very athletic tight end. Um, he's 6'3", 248, can really move, especially for his size, can really move. Uh, very underrated athleticism from Garrett Dickerson, and I think really has a shot uh, to make this roster. I know we have Eric Thomas in there. I know we have Levine Toilolo, and I know we have Caden Smith there, but uh, his athleticism may set himself apart uh, as far as those other guys go because Eric Thomas is not much athletic. Caden Smith either, or... Um, Levine Toilolo, they're mostly guys to use the block. So, um, Garrett Dick Dickerson could be another receiving threat that the Giants can use if Evan Ingram were to go down. Next, we move on to an undrafted free agent guy out of South Carolina, and that is Kyle Markway. Markway recorded 31 receptions for 349 yards in his last year with South Carolina, and his career is a four, a 459 yards on 37 receptions and three touchdowns. He's basically your basic tight end, your average tight end, and that's not to say anything bad about him. It's just that nowadays in the NFL, we're seeing a lot more tight ends who are a lot more athletic, a lot more faster, but he is really an old school tight end. He's uh, uh, not, not the fastest guy, not the guy that runs 
you know, great routes, but he has good hands. He catches the ball in soft spots where the defense is not paying attention and makes his yards that way. Um, and he's just pretty much a typical tight end. There's not much to say about him. I don't know how much of a chance he really has in making this roster. Maybe he's cut out for a practice squad spot. We'll see what happens. He has to compete with the next guy I'm going to mention, but uh, we'll see what happens. We now move on to our last guy, and this is the guy I am most excited about and that is Ryson John coming out of Simon Fraser University in Canada. He was looked at as one of the best CFL prospects in uh, the NCAA and you know he was supposed to go into the CFL but the Giants picked him up to try to make an NFL team and I really like what Rice and John brings. You look at in 2019, check out these mind-blowing stats. I get this is college and he was playing from the wide receiver position so let's just keep that in mind. He wasn't a tight end. He was playing from a wide, wide receiver position but check out these stats. 53 receptions for 861 yards. Check out that average. That average is insane. 16.2 6, yards per reception and 10 touchdowns. This guy was nothing but a deep threat. 16 yards is 16 yards per reception is fantastic for me. My average I want in a wide receiver or even a tight end. A tight end, I would want at least probably like 12, right? 11, 12 for a tight end. Uh, if you're an athletic one, I'll push 13, 14. But 16 is crazy. Um, and for a wide receiver, I'd like around 14, 15. So, I mean, uh, that, that that's insane from uh, Rice and John. I, I, I love what he brings to the table. This guy ran a 4 6 40 yard dash um and he, he's great he, he eclipsed uh seven, 1740 yards for 19 touchdowns in his career and his average career uh um yards per reception were 14.8 that is perfect for me um six seven six seven 227 pounds he was obviously way too big to play wide receiver in the nfl uh and the reason for that is is he's not very um athletic for the wide receiver position he's plenty athletic for the tight end position and if you ask me rice and john gives evan ingram the biggest run for his money i think they're almost like clones if you ask me and uh i don't know rice and john for 227 he just looks more huskier i know evan ingram got bigger he's now 230 i believe but um or 240 correct me if i'm wrong um but rice and john um is another athletic tight end he's a guy you want to keep at tight end for wide receiver he really doesn't run great routes if you look at his film at simon fraser university it his routes were not crisp at all uh when you try to make a cut he really didn't do anything uh he's just a straight line guy he's just gonna get you out of his way he's gonna run in a straight line like a dk metcalf almost and that is how he is going to make his money and he was very successful at that at SF, uh, sfu in canada so we'll see what he brings to the table from a new position in the tight end position i think if he runs a lot of seam routes i think he, if he runs even corner routes then you don't really need the most skill to run a corner route i think he will do just fine in that i think he has the height to catch those 50 50 balls in the red zone and he is a very good high pointer of the ball so uh we'll see what happens man but i'm extremely excited for rice and john so let's check out the projected depth chart i have for the tight ends and man this this is very very hard to make it's a very hard depth chart to make because i think we have a lot of talent but i don't know how how what the Giants really want to do here because if you ask me if you ask what I want to do I'd obviously keep Evan Ingram and I'd keep Caden Smith and you know we have our you know run blocking uh slash receiving uh duo right there but I'd also want to give a chance to Rice and John as well now I believe we'll keep four tight ends on the team so if you ask me I'm gonna put Evan Ingram I'm gonna put Caden Smith I'm gonna put Levine Toy Lolo and then I'm going to put Rice and John. It gives you that perfect mix of receiving tight ends and blocking tight ends. And Caden Smith is kind of both. He does the blocking and receiving. As far as Garrett Dickerson goes, I think he has a shot. But Rice and John might just, you know, overlap him and might give him a run for his money because uh, Rice and John just has more athleticism. And that's what Garrett Dickerson, you know, pretty much prides himself on it should be his athleticism and his his, his speed so um rice and john i think can can just outmatch him uh in that way and eric tomlinson 
uh, I'm not too big on Eric Tomlinson. And, um, you know, Levine Toilolo, you know, he'll make the team, obviously. Um, Kyle Markway, it's, you know, it is what it is. But uh, that being said, guys, that is my tight end positional preview for the New York Giants. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Woo!